In blocks, we added a bitumen DPC to stop rising damp. Then we mixed up traditional mortar, just sand, cement, and water. Added a splash of dish soap too, makes the mix smoother and easier to work with. Use the lemon scented one, smoother mix, better smell on site, win-win. Next up, setting the corners. For these big AAC blocks, you need a solid mortar bed, so we don't play around with little trowel scoops. Just pour out the whole bucket, then spread it clean with the trowel, fast even, and ready for setting. This bed's around two to three centimeters thick, gives us enough play to get it perfectly level. If the base isn't right, the whole wall's off, so we take our time here. Time to set the first block. These things are big and light, but fragile, so you've got to handle them with care. To set this block right, we use a rubber mallet to make sure it's sitting flat and doesn't rock. Then we check level in both directions, front to back and side to side. If it's even slightly off now, the mistake just grows with every course above. We tap it down gently, working corner to corner until it's locked in solid. Once it's perfectly flat, we line it up with the edge of the foundation. That concrete edge was poured square, exactly 90 degrees, so this block locks the whole wall into alignment. This bed has to be the same on every corner. That's what makes the whole wall sit perfectly level. Even a few millimeters off now can throw off the alignment across the entire row. Placing the next block, and yeah, the edge is chipped. These AAC blocks are light, but fragile. Even just loading and unloading can leave small damage. It's pretty common. As long as the chip's not on a load point or alignment edge, it won't cause any problems. Cleaning off the overflow now. If you leave it, it hardens and gets in the way later. Plus it just looks bad. And one last quick check. Making sure the block is plumb with the face of the foundation. Now that the first corner blocks are in, we check each one with an optical level. That way we know they're all the same height before building them up into full corners. And now we can put the second piece of the corner. To join them together, I use Thinbed AAC block adhesive. These blocks don't interlock, so the glue locks that vertical joint solid. I spread it with a notched trowel to make sure we've got full contact across the face. Now we set the second piece of the corner, making sure it's exactly the same height as the first block we already checked. This part has to be precise, the height, the joint, the alignment, it all matters. Getting this right locks the corner square, so when we start laying the rest of the wall, everything flows clean and straight. And off we go with the rest of the blocks. This is where the wall starts moving. These AAC blocks are 20 centimeters high, 25 wide, and 60 long, so you can cover a lot of ground fast. They're big but still light, which makes it easy to move quick without killing your back. But this first course has to be spot on. We're still using mortar here, and this is where we fix any height or alignment issues. Because once we switch to glue, there's no room for big corrections. It sets fast and there's not much play. AAC blocks don't hide mistakes. If the first row's off, the whole wall will show it. So we take our time here, get it flat, level, and tight, and then the rest goes up smooth. And the last block just fits perfectly. No cutting needed. We just fill the joint with glue to close the gap tight and avoid any hollow spots. And just like that, the first course is done. From this point on, everything moves a lot quicker. We'll be switching to glue and with these big AAC blocks, that really speeds things up, as long as the base is right. At the same time, we're building the partition walls. So the whole block work ties together as one solid structure. And just like that, three courses are done. On the fourth course, we're cutting two channels across the wall for horizontal reinforcement. I'm using a standard wood router. AC blocks are soft, so it makes the job fast and simple. These channels will hold steel rebar that ties the blocks together, adds strength over openings, and helps prevent cracking across longer runs. Yeah, the channels came out a bit wonky, but it doesn't matter. We're using 6mm rebar, and that's what's actually doing the work here, not the grooves. One more job with these channels. We need to fill them up. For that, we're mixing up the same thin bed glue we've been using for the blocks. Only difference, this time we make it a bit wetter, so it flows easier and fills around the rebar properly. The glue locks the steel in place and gets rid of any gaps. And we're gonna need plenty of it. Those channels run through the whole wall, and they've gotta be packed full. And just like that, channels are packed and ready for the next course. With the channels filled, we move on to gluing the next course. I start by loading the glue with a putty knife, then spread it evenly across the surface using a notched trowel. The layer has to be flat and consistent. No high spots, no gaps. It's way quicker than mortar. No need for fat beds, just spread it, seat the block and keep moving. With the glue down, the blocks kept going up. The wall's coming together fast. You can already feel the structure taking shape and locking in solid. Course by course, it's starting to feel like a real building. These AAC blocks are a great choice for house builds. They're fire resistant, energy efficient, and offer great sound insulation. One more important step I didn't mention, backfilling the hollow gaps with glue. It locks the blocks together, fills any weak joints, and helps prevent cold bridges forming inside the wall. It takes just a bit of time, but makes a big difference in strength and insulation. And we're on the last block right by the window. Glue gets spread across the top, 
lock drops and clean, and we make sure everything lines up tight. That's it. Wall's fully built, joints sealed, and ready for the next stage of the build. Here's the finished wall. Everything's up, straight, and level. Above the window, the lintel will be one block high, 20 centimeters. Right on top of that goes a 25 centimeter ring beam. We're pouring both together in one go. Time to start building the formwork. We're starting with the bottom board, screwing on small extensions so it sits tight on the blocks at each side of the window. Now we're fixing the sideboards from the outside, starting with just one side. That leaves the inside wide open, so there's room to move around and place the reinforcement properly. Way easier to work clean and get everything lined up before closing it in. Have to check the level on this board. It's top marks where the concrete stops. Every sideboard has to line up, so the ring beam stays level all the way around. Once it's leveled, we screw the board in to lock it in place. It's just a temporary hold for now. We'll reinforce everything properly once all the boards are in. With the outer boards going in, we're reusing leftover OSB, giving them one last job before they're done. They're strong enough for this pour, and the finished concrete's getting covered anyway, so no point wasting new material. Just one important thing about using this reclaimed OSB, the edges need to be clean and straight so everything lines up level. And just like that, all the outside boards are in. Everything's lined up and ready for the next step. We need the inside boards in before we can reinforce the formwork, but there's a few steps to get through first. Before we go any further, we need to cover all these outside boards with oil, so the concrete won't stick when it's time to strip the formwork. It's much easier to do it at this stage, while there's nothing in the way. No inside boards, no rebar cages. Open access so we can move fast. Skipping this step just makes more work later. Oiling now saves time, cleanup, and gives a cleaner finish when the forms come off. And once the pour's done, you'll be glad this part was handled right. Once everything's oiled up, we can start installing the pre-made cages. We built these off-site, four 14mm horizontal bars, wrapped tight with 6mm stirrups, keeps it solid and saves us time here on site. All the rebar cages are pre-cut to size, so most of it's just drop and go. Lintels are quick, they set them in and move on, but the full ring beam cages take more effort. They're longer, heavier, and need careful lining up to stay in position while we close up the formwork. Once all the main ring beam cages are in, we move on to locking everything together with joining bars at every corner and cage connection. Each bar overlaps by at least 60 centimeters on both sides. That overlaps what ties the whole thing into one solid structure. We secure every loose end with three tight steel wire wraps. It takes time, it's a bit of a grind, but if you skip this part, your reinforcement's floating once the concrete hits. This step transforms a bunch of individual cages into one unified reinforced frame, ready to handle pressure, weight, and vibration long term. And yeah, we're still rocking the homemade rebar hook. Just a bent steel rod, but it does the job, saves your fingers, and keeps things moving fast. This isn't the glamorous part of the build, but it's the backbone of your whole ring beam. Get this wrong and nothing else matters. Get it right, and it'll hold for decades. That's the full reinforcement locked in. All the joints tied up tight. No one's gonna see this after the pour, but it still has to be right. This is what holds it all together. Last thing left to do with these cages before we close everything up with the formwork, lift them off the base using chairs. That gives us a 3 centimeter concrete cover underneath, which protects the steel from moisture and corrosion. We're also keeping the top gap tight. Too much concrete above the bars weakens the structure instead of helping it. These simple plastic chairs are cheap, fast to install, and make sure every cage sits at the right height. Now that everything's lifted and spaced right, we can finally close up the formwork from the inside and start prepping for the concrete pour. As we're putting up the inside boards, we keep checking the height with a level. Matching them to the outside boards, which are already perfectly set, the concrete will pour right to the top, so both sides have to be spot on. Once the level's right, we screw the boards straight into the blocks. They're soft enough for regular wood screws to hold it in place. With this board in place, we can drill straight through the bottom of the formwork, outside to inside. That's where the threaded rods will go later to hold everything tight. All the threaded rods are in, locking the outside and inside boards tight. We use 5x5 five five spacers between them, screwed in at the bottom. They also stick out the top about 5 to 10 centimeters, so we can screw in our support sticks right on top and brace everything together. Before we screw the top together, we're wedging in wooden spacers right between the formwork boards. Each one's cut to the exact same width as the blocks, so the spacing stays dead on from top to bottom. These spacers make sure the whole setup holds its shape. No bulging, no squeezing in. It's all about keeping the formwork true so the final shape matches the block work exactly. Takes a bit of time to prep, but this step is key to getting everything spot on. Once all the spacers are wedged in at the top, it's time to screw on the upper support sticks. One for each side, locking into both 5x5 five five battens. This step pulls the whole structure tight, holding the outside and inside boards together from the top, not just the bottom. And we don't just screw into the 5x5s, five five we go through the top edge of the form boards too, so once we remove those spacers, the boards don't spring back out. This basically locks in the final shape of the formwork. Everything's tight, aligned, and reinforced across the whole top edge. It might look like overkill, but without this step, the 
pressure of the pour could easily push things out. Once this section is locked in, we move on, shift the spacers over, and repeat the process on the next run. That's it. All the formwork's done and locked tight. Every board, rod, and brace holding solid. This stage took time, but now it's dialed in and ready for the concrete truck and the pour that's coming next. We got an old school concrete pump truck for this one. Bit rusty, but hopefully it'll do the job. It delivered four cubic meters of concrete, just enough for all the lintels and the ring beam on this build. We start with a quick slurry pour, just to lubricate the pump hose and keep the mix flowing smooth without clogs or blockages. We're pouring now, and yeah, this mix came in a bit too wet. Not ideal, but when you're working with ready mix, you don't always get full control. It's not the end of the world though. A wetter mix flows faster, especially through tight spaces and dense reinforcement, like around these cages and corners. That means less work pushing it around and fewer chances of leaving voids or air pockets. Only downside is too much water can lower the strength slightly and cause more shrinkage as it dries. But for this job, with solid rebar cages, tight formwork, and everything locked in, we're still well within a safe margin. Since the mix is already pretty wet, we don't need to overdo the vibrating. Just quick dips to settle it in and help it flow through every corner. Vibrating helps remove trapped air, fills tight gaps, and locks the concrete tight around all the rebar. Even with a loose mix like this, it's a must if you want strong, crack-free results once everything hardens. No shortcuts here. After the pour and vibrating is done, we go around with just a stick, dragging it across the top of the formwork. That scrapes off the overflow and levels everything out, since the whole formwork was built to the same height. No fancy tools needed here. Just a bit of patience, steady hands, and clean formwork, and it all smooths out nice and easy in the end. Once everything's leveled, we install vertical threaded rods for the roof plate. That's the timber beam the rafters will bolt into later. Doing this now saves the roofer from drilling into hardened concrete and avoids wasting money on chemical anchors. They'll just drop the plate on top, line it with DPC, drill through the wood, and bolt it down. Clean and simple. With everything leveled and the threaded rods in place, it's time to let the concrete cure for a few days before we strip the formwork. Concrete's all white now. That means we can finally start stripping the formwork down. Got a lot of screws ahead. Time to burn through a few drill batteries. First thing, we take off all the top sticks. They've been holding the 5x5s in place. You'll see some lumps of concrete left behind where we couldn't level it under the sticks, but we'll deal with that later. Once the sticks are off, we start unscrewing the bolts and pull out the 5x5s. Moment of truth! Time to start pulling these boards off. Fingers crossed there's no honeycombing hiding underneath. From the inside, everything looks clean. Let's hope the outside turns out just as nice. The outside's a bit more tricky. All the stripping has to be done from a ladder. That means more climbing, more reaching, and way less room to move. Gotta stay focused and careful here because one wrong step or drop board and it can turn into a mess real quick. Outside came out looking nice too. Once all the form works off, we can finally get to fixing those concrete lumps left behind and clean everything up. First job now is brushing off all the loose bits of concrete left after stripping the formwork. We're using a stiff brush so we can clearly see any real lumps left on top of the ring beam. Next, we're grabbing a diamond concrete grinding disc and putting it on the angle grinder to smooth out all the lumps. Gotta keep the roofers happy, right? And yeah, always wear glasses and a dust mask. Don't be like me, left the mask at home again. This stuff is proper dusty. And just like that, the grinding's done. All the lumps are gone, top surface is clean and smooth, job's looking tidy from the inside. We'll let the roofers jump in next and do their thing. For now, block work and ring beam checked off the list. You can really see the shape of this house now and start imagining how it's all gonna look once the inside comes together. Here's the outside view. Full block work done, ring beam locked in, and solid all the way. We're keeping those lintel supports in for one more week, just to make sure the concrete sets rock solid. If you enjoyed watching this build come together, drop a like. Plenty more projects on the way, so hit that subscribe and stick around. It only gets more real from here.